Hi, Pastor Steve here. I want to thank you for listening today, and I want to encourage you because I know that God will truly bless you as you study His Word. So hey, let's get started. Continue to worship the Lord together. Sing, I count on one thing. I count on one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. 
are here moving in our midst I worship you I worship you you are here working in this place I worship you I worship you you are darkness my god that is who you are you are we make miracle work promise keep light in the darkness my god that is who you are you are here turning lives around i worship
stop working Even when I see it, you're working Even when I feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, cause Jesus, you are a way maker Miracle worker, promise keeper Light in the darkness, my God That is who you are together. You are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Sing that out, church. You are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. That is who you that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Amen. You may be seated. Today, before we jump into our time of communion, I just have something super exciting that I have the privilege of announcing. And so I'm going to invite Dean and Brittany up here uh, to the stage this morning. For those of you who don't know Dean and Brittany, they've been attending here since about June. Uh, and uh, they became members here in July, and if you don't know them, you really should greet them after. Um, uh, great, they're really good friends of Grace and ours, but you should definitely greet them after service and congratulate them on their engagement. <laughs> Absolutely. So we're super pumped for them. Uh, last night, Kansas City, Dean uh, got down on one knee and popped the question, and it didn't take to say. Brittany's very surprised. <laughs> And uh, as a church, we have an awesome opportunity to just bless and encourage them. And so we're going to pray for them together. And if you feel led, please extend a hand as, as we uh, bless and pray over them this morning. Uh, dear Lord, I thank you for Dean and Brittany. I thank you for how you're moving in their lives and, and how you're moving here at this church and the story that you're writing, Lord. I just, right now I lift up their engagement season that they're in, Lord. It's a super important season. And as a church, we just lift them up in prayer and, and, and we just pray that throughout all of the planning and busyness and craziness that they may experience, that they will just take a deep breath and soak in the excitement uh, that is becoming one flesh and, and honoring you and, and, and pursuing your gift of marriage, Lord. So today, uh, we just lift them up to you. We give you all the glory, God. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And uh, yes, absolutely. Super pumped that I also get to share today's communion meditation with you all. So Good morning again. Hope you're all doing well. Thanksgiving week is one of my favorites. Uh, anybody else here? I love Thanksgiving. Uh, obviously, there's great food and there's fun with family and friends, but it's the focus on gratitude that's my favorite part. All the other holidays we have, you know, sometimes they can get really commercial and focus on material things, but Thanksgiving priority is to, to give thanks, be grateful for what we have, and, and that's one of my favorite parts. Today, I actually like to focus on Thanksgiving, not the holiday, but the action of giving thanks to God. Luke 22, 19 through 20 says this, and he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, the cup after they had eaten, saying, this cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. As believers in Jesus, we are seeking to follow in his footsteps. We live to love him and keep his commands, to follow in his example. Each week, we take communion regularly here as part of our worship services so that we always remember and reflect on Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. Although oftentimes we read these passages where Jesus gave the first communion meal in the upper room, and we gloss over one of the most crucial parts of Jesus' example. I'm going to read our passage in Luke again for us. It says, And he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, the cup after they had eaten, 
saying, this cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. Jesus had an attitude of thankfulness and gratitude. Yes, he was sharing about his death that was soon to come and, and giving the instructions of the communion meal, but before he said any of that, he gave thanks. Today, as we reflect on Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, I'd like to challenge all of us to posture our hearts with thanksgiving. Let's be grateful and celebrate the blessings God has given us. Most importantly, let's be grateful for Jesus' sacrifice on the cross and the gift of eternal life that we can have because of his great love. Here at the Heights, we practice an open communion, and this simply means that all believers in Jesus Christ are free to partake with us. Soon, the communion servers will bring by a plate with a double stack cup for you to take. Uh, and the top cup is the juice, and the bottom cup is the bread. The juice represents Jesus' blood, and the bottom cup, the bread, represents Jesus' body. After I pray, you may partake whenever you're ready, and, and then we'll continue to praise God together in songs. Lord, we love you, and we are so grateful for all that you've done for us. God, thank you for your sacrifice on the cross. Thank you for your love that you demonstrated for us at Calvary. God, I pray that today as, as we partake of these communion elements, that gratitude and thankfulness will be the forefront of our hearts and minds, that we'll give you all the praise and all of the glory. Jesus, it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Church, whenever you're ready, please stand as we continue to sing together.
that. Sing that again with us. I know I, for one, am particularly grateful for our praise team leading us in worship. Can we praise God and show our appreciation for our praise team today? Amen. Once again, good morning to you, church, and welcome. Whether you're joining us here in person or following along online, whether you've been a member of this congregation for decades or whether this is your very first time in the house here today, we're so glad that you've joined us. And listen, if you are new around here today, our mission, which is the great co-mission, is actually to make disciples. We try really hard to do that here. We are focused on following Jesus and loving people so that we can reach the world. Amen? Amen. Amen. Today is a very special and unique day in that in addition to a time of Bible study, we're actually going to be carving out just a little bit of time to hold what we call one of our annual congregational meetings in accordance with our church bylaws. You see, each and every year at this time, we take the opportunity just to, again, briefly reflect back over the operational budget needs of the year so far, as well as decide on an operational budget for the coming new year. And I pray that this open, transparent, behind-the-scenes opportunity that you have to see this will be much more fun, certainly more informational, and I pray God-honoring than any other kind of budget meeting you've ever attended. Now, listen carefully. If you are an official member of Lawrence Heights, we're going to be asking you to vote and approve a budget for next year as well as some key leadership positions. If you're following along online, you can always email your vote in as well. Now, if you are not an official member, even if you're visiting for the first time today, I pray that what you hear today will actually encourage you to jump right in and become an integral part of this beautiful, wonderful, crazy church family that we love so much. As always, our finances are open to the public. In addition to the 2023 budget pro proposal, we've provided a detailed spending analysis worksheet showing our operational spending over each of the last five years. We've emailed this out churchwide to our distribution list. Printed copies have been available for weeks. They're still out there in the foyer. 2022 has been truly transformational for our church, to say the least. God has been so very faithful. We've got so much to be thankful for. So before we dive into our time of Bible study today, I want to go ahead and kind of transition us to this time. It's going to serve as our congregational meeting. To get us started, I'm going to invite Matt Regal to come up and share a few words. Matt is the chairman of our elders this year, and I'm so thankful for his leadership in particular, as well as our entire leadership team. Again, this year has been another very unique year with lots of unique challenges, but we have so much to be thankful for. God has truly blessed us beyond imagination. So Matt's going to share a few things, and then we'll both be up here available to talk more about budgeting and spending, as well as volunteer leadership positions, and answer any questions that you might have. So join me in giving Matt a warm welcome as he shares right now. Good morning. I um, want to stress a little bit what, uh, what Steve says a lot. He, he, he will share oftentimes, um, if you're not a member of this crazy fun family, um, and that's what I want to pause for a sec. Um, we, we are a family. Um, we are um, united um, with some very, very, very important things. I'm glad that you don't, well, we all don't look alike, right? 
My oldest son doesn't have a chance. He's going to look exactly like me, um, unfortunately. Um, but we are a family. Um, and so this is a family meeting. Um, the last time I called a regal family meeting, um, my oldest was like, is this going to be a good family meeting or a bad family meeting? Let me promise you, this will be a good family meeting um, this morning. Um, we're going to cover a few things. We're going to um, have a, a time, uh, uh, share some praises, um, have a, a discussion and a vote for ministry leaders, um, and a discussion and a vote for our annual finance, our, our budget. Um, this, the, the message today, the communion meditation, the season that we're in um, is, is Thanksgiving. Um, so I wanted to pause. Um, and first of all, um, thank you. Um, thank you for um, the prayers um, for this church, um, for this meeting that we're having today, um, for our leaders. Um, this church um, and the growth um, and spiritual health of this church is dependent upon your prayers. Um, and so um, those that have been praying in preparation for this, um, I wanted to thank you um, and maybe even challenge you a little bit. If you haven't been praying for our leaders, for ministry um, leaders, for, the, for our pastors, for the staff, um, for this church, I would, I would encourage you and challenge you um, to, to make that part of your regular prayer. Again, our church is, is dependent um, upon that. Um, we have made um, a couple of additions to our staff, um, our pastor staff, um, this last um, year, and we need to give praise. So um, we, we, we had um, Pastor Ben and um, Casey join us, and then we had Pastor Jalen and Grace follow not too far behind. Um, so I want to pause because we need to give praise for that. I, I had the distinct honor to be the elder representative on our search committee. Um, and I'm pausing for a short story here because I think it's important. Um, w the elders or the search committee was tasked with a pretty crazy task. Um, by the way, we've got two and a half positions, maybe three. Go. Um, and so we spent lots of time in prayer, um, in planning, in prayer. Um, and then we asked big questions and trusted. Um, and I shared with Pastor Ben and Pastor Jalen in the last couple of weeks, it didn't go anything like we originally planned, right? Um, our first interview was, was with Pastor Ben, um, and in our heads, in our priorities, we, we prioritized, you know, worship and, and youth first. Um, just like you guys, after you met Pastor Ben, we were like, we, we got to hire this dude, right? We cannot let him go. Um, and so we got to, okay, we've got an associate. Now we got two, uh, again, big prayers. Um, and the, the beauty in this is that last song that we sang, show us your glory, right? That's what God did through bringing Pastor Ben and Pastor Jalen and their families to this church. Um, they have a, he has a plan. Um, and that's the exciting part is that we're on the precipice of, of seeing some really cool things that are happening here. And so um, his goodness and faithfulness was, was shown through that. And um, we, we, get to, we get to stop and reflect on it and remember it. Um, we also have a few new trustees. Now, um, our bylaws tell us that the trustees are a – um, a voted position from the congregation. Um, we um, had had two trustees, um, and I want to thank Larry Broadle, um, had served um, for many years as a trustee. He asked to step down, and so we needed to fill. So the elders actually did um, appoint a few, um, as per our bylaws, I'm a rules guy, um, um, to, to fill that um, in the interim. And so um, Dwayne Biggerstaff um, and Ted Height has have filled that position, along with D. Beisel, and D. Beisel has been on 
um, for, for years as well. Um, so the, the three of them have been serving the last number of months and have done a really great job. Um, we have tasked them as an elder board to do s uh, more than they have done in the past. Um, they are responsible for working with Pastor Steve um, to create the budget. Um, they, they took numbers. Um, they, they worked those numbers um, and then presented the elders um, a, um, the same um, you know, budget that you guys have seen as well. Um, we've also tasked them with helping to manage um, some of the physical plant, the, um, the work with you know, um, the foundation. Um, that's not their fault, right? Um, the work with um, um, everything else with the tower. Um, so they're, um, they're, they're doing a really fantastic job. Um, and um, so um, we are going to hand out some ballots um, and a few things to note. Um, there, um, you'll, you'll see all members are, are asked to take one. Um, and so if you'll just kind of raise your hand as they pass by, um, J.D. or Pastor Steve will give them. If you're not a member and still would like to see the ballot, you are more than happy. We're more than happy to have you um, see that. Again, in a, in a sense of transparency, um, we want you to, uh, to know um, that, uh, that you're, you're welcome to see those as well. Um, these are our proposed ministry leaders. Um, we have, uh, for clarification, we, we currently have four um, elders, um, and we're asking, as we um, presented to you a couple of weeks ago, there's two additional names on there, um, Avery Semeca um, and Ron Garvin, um, that we um, would like for you to uh, um, consider and, and vote for, for, for both. Um, we do not have any elders rolling off um, the, the elder board currently, so um, this would be an addition from four to six. Um, there, there is no limit to our elders um, but we have we have spent uh, a lot of time in the elder board in prayer um, about this, and and again um, hope that you have um, as well. Um, so elders and trustees serve a three year term, and then the ministry leaders serve a one year term. Many of our current ministry leaders that are listed there um, are are faithfully just continuing the ministry um, that they have done, and so um, wanted to say thank you for. For our ministry leaders, for those um, that give their time and effort um, to, uh, to to uh, you know um, serving at this church, um, there are a few open positions that you'll see. Um, one of them um, is a uh, a position that we're actually sort of creating. It's always been done. Uh, Marge and Keith Spence um, have faithfully for many many years. Um, sort of coordinated the, the, the preparation of the communion. Um, and uh, they're, they're um, stepping down um, to um, offer an opportunity for, for somebody else, um, a single person, a family, a couple, a small group, um, whatever, um, to sort of step um, into that role. A lot of coordination um, more than anything. Um, but, again, feel free to talk to the Spences if you have any questions. Um, we also have um, the need for um, a new men's ministry um, leader as well. So um, we, we, uh, we hope that you've been praying through this as well um, with the elders and the other ministry leaders. Um, if you have and feel upon your heart that you'd like to put your name down in any of those positions, we'd, we, would, we would relish that. Um, if this is the first time you're thinking about it and you're, you're like, hey, I still think I'd like to, to serve in some way, come find one of the elders, um, one of the pastor staff, one of the ministry leaders. Um, you know, serving um, is a, a critical need. Um, and I will tell you from, from experience, um, serving does more for me than it, than it does for you. Um, and so if you're looking, a way, looking for a way to, to get plugged in, um, Man, we could, we could, there's lots of things that we can um, find um, for you to help. Um, so I'd, I'd challenge you, again, if you're not serving, to, to, to do so. Um, in accordance with our bylaws, we're asking all voting members to cast the vote. Um, at the end of the service, um, um, we'll have JD, maybe some others in the back, just collecting those, those votes. So feel free to fold them over and then just hand them in. Um, and we'll, we'll, have, we'll have some answers here in the next couple of weeks. Um, 
before we before we move on um, to a time of discussion for the um, the budget, I did want to pause and see if there's any questions um, that relate to the ministry leaders, the elders, um, the the trustees. Um, so I'm going to stop talking and, and look around and see for hands. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'll repeat the question. The, the difference between a trustee and an elder. Um, the elder role um, is fairly well defined in, in Scripture. Um, our men's group is actually studying this right now. Um, and these are the... the um, the men that are called to, to lead and shepherd and um, our, our the flock. Um, we're responsible for ensuring um, that, that the pastoral staff um, doesn't, doesn't veer too, well, doesn't veer from the truth. Um, that's our one of the callings that we have as elders. Um, Steve may be able to more correctly, um, well, the, uh, the trustees, Ministry, I'm, I'm sorry, you're, you asked about the, the trustees and not the ministry leaders. I was going to define the ministry leader for you. Um, but We're asking simple terms. Um, the trustees are uh, overseeing the physical plant facilities and things like the, the business end of this, where the elders oversee the spiritual oversight of the church and, and discipline. So that's the distinction. Mm -hmm. As always, much more um, concise than El Regal. Well, Sorry. But it, it, you may be visiting from other denominations, other church backgrounds too, and you might be asking about ministry leaders. That is the deacon role here at Lawrence Heights, the diaconos. We just use the term ministry leader um, here. Thank you. What else? Any other questions? Okay, well, um, sort of transition to um, a discussion on the budget. And, and again, as, as I sort of shared before, um, this is the first year that the um, that the trustees have initiated this process. Um, worked with Pastor Steve to um, to create it. Um, it was um, presented to the same budget that you guys are seeing. It was presented to the elders for a shorter discussion than what we would normally do. Um, but um, I'm going to uh, to hand this over a little bit to Pastor Steve um, for um, a short time of of discussion and questions as well. Thanks, Matt. It's important to know that giving, attendance, financial information is never the indication of a healthy church. It's just one of many indicators. Our primary focus, again, continues to be on spiritual formation and spiritual growth. But the financial part of it enables us to do those things. And so uh, you do have a budget that's been available. Because of my hitting the wrong button, it was printed out on really large paper. But now that I'm old and all those numbers are so small, that really helped. And we may just do that from now on. But those are still out there in the foyer if you want a copy. Even if you're not a member, you want to see where every penny has been spent over the last five years from our operational budget that's right out there for you, as well as a new budget proposal moving forward. Uh, typically, I want to anticipate some of the questions you might have. Most of the time, people look at changes in the budget that are dramatic, and they usually ask about that. One uh, exciting new change is in the area of women's ministry with the addition of the Women's Life team under the direction of Sophia Semeca and Elaine Height and Pam Moore. Uh, the women's ministry is just exploding with lots of wonderful things, and they presented uh, a pretty bold budget for exciting new things in the coming new year, and that was granted. And in addition, because there's some women's ministry stuff that falls outside of the women's life Area. So that area of the budget was increased in anticipation of uh, those vibrant activities. Uh, we also combined a couple of um, other budget items like the library, which is non-existent anymore. We felt the Lord was commanding us to put that into a discipleship fund where evangelism and outreach as well as discipleship are key um, uh, efforts and focus for our church. And we put some money behind that as well. Uh, those are the main changes. A couple of others were just consolidating accounts like in worship ministry, the way Jalen likes to administrate funds within his department. We merged a couple of music resources accounts that were obsolete and empowered him to use those however he 
he sees fit. So those are the big highlights. Otherwise, it's a pretty flat budget. I think it's an increase of a little over $100 per week over the prior year. Our giving, and some of you might be asking, Steve, I'm looking at the budget, and it um, looks like our giving is behind about $25,000 from our year-to-date goal, and that's certainly true. Um, but God has been so faithful, and he's met every need, just like you might do at home whenever the income isn't as great as you anticipated, you scale back expenses. So let me encourage you, we are a church that operates in the black. We are not in debt in any way. Uh, we've just made those necessary cutbacks. But I want to challenge you to get involved. If you haven't been giving, be faithful to what God is commanding you to do and be a part of this wonderful ministry moving forward. So with that, let me just say, any questions about the budget information that we've had out before you for weeks now for your prayerful consideration? Listen, we certainly don't want to squelch discussion, so if you do have questions, even if this is your first Sunday here, be sure to see me afterwards or one of our elders. We'd love to answer those questions for you. Thank you very much. I'm going to get away from behind this thing, um, but I do want to s- stop and pray, so please, please join me. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this family. Lord, I thank you for Lawrence Heights. I thank you for its ministry leaders. I thank you for the elders. I thank you for the pastoral staff. I thank you for the staff. Um, I thank you for all those that that give um, to their time and effort um, and volunteering as well. Lord, we we do this all for only one reason, and that's because you are good. Um, You have given us so much um, that out of that, thankfulness. We want to be obedient to the, to the word um, and, and give back. Lord, continue to bless this church um, as we continue to follow your will. Lord, it is, it is you who we want to magnify, um, not ourselves, not this church, but, but you. Um, so be magnified with with what it is that we do this next year. And it's in your son's most precious name that we pray. Amen. Thanks, Matt. Can we praise God for his leadership as well, leading us here today? Amen. Listen, as we begin to draw that meeting to a close and shift our attention back to God's word, I want to challenge you Again, listen, it is time for you to get involved, to help us in advancing God's mission. Individually, we can't do everything, but if each and every one of us would just do one thing, as we work together, the impact in our community would be incredible. So whether you're, again, here in the house today, in person, or following along online, I really want to challenge you to consider how you can get in the story, either for the very first time or in a brand new way. And then pray, give, and serve. Our world needs Jesus. Amen? Amen. Well, for those of you, again, with ballots, we're going to have you somebody collecting them in the back. Just remember to drop them off as you leave. Now, one last announcement really quickly before our time of Bible study. Beginning next week, we're going to be launching our annual Blessed to Be a Blessing campaign in which we generate additional funds to bless our four local ministry partners with our special end-of-the-year giving. These include in alphabetical order, Alpha Christian Children's Home, Family Promise here in town, as well as the Insight Women's Center and KU Campus Christian. So between now and the end of the year, we're asking you to prayerfully consider a special love offering to one or all four of these wonderful ministry partners of ours. I think that's it. Finally, in the way of family business, what do you say we go to the Lord one more time and let's ask him to bless our time of study. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, today we thank you for your amazing power and work in our lives and in our church. Lord, thank you for your goodness, for your provision, for your blessings that you lavish on us. Thank you for your great love and care. Thank you for the sacrifice of your son Jesus so that we might have freedom and eternal life with you. Lord, please forgive us when we don't thank you enough for who you are, for all that you do, and for all that you've given. In our time together today, help us to set our eyes and our hearts on you afresh. Renew our spirits. Fill us with your peace and your joy and even deeper levels of gratitude. We love you. 
Lord, and we need you today and every day. We give you praise, we give you thanks, for you alone are worthy. In Jesus' name, and all together in unity, the church said, Amen. 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 Listen, I really do hope that our time together today, throughout our time of worship, our little family meeting, as well as this message, I pray they're all encouraging to your heart in the Lord. We truly have so much to be thankful for. God has certainly been good to us as a church family. In our time together in Bible study today, we're going to be looking to the book of Psalms because it reminds us and calls us to glorify the Lord and to magnify Him with thanksgiving. Some of you know that Kelly and I were traveling earlier this week, and well, to have something to listen to on the plane, I tried to find a Christian Thanksgiving playlist on my Spotify account. I was hoping that it would allow me to just worship and listen to encouraging songs and, you know, kind of get in the mood for today's message. I'll tell you, if you've got Spotify, you can find lots of really great playlists out there with Christian songs for Thanksgiving. So picture the scene. I'm on the plane. I've got my AirPods in. My eyes are closed in worship. When all of a sudden, for some reason, right in the middle of these great praise and worship songs, giving God glory for all he's done, the next song comes on. And it's, we're all in this together from High School Musical. That's right. I'm deep in worship one minute, and then I hear this voice singing, we're all in this together. Now, incorrectly in the first service, I identified that vocalist as Zach Zach Efron, but Casey Field, Ben's, Pastor Ben's wife, corrected me. It was not, in fact, Zach Efron, and I want to be technically correct here today. I don't know who it was, but it wasn't Zac Efron, but it was awful nonetheless, if you ask me. It was the (laughs) devil himself. Lord have mercy. But now that's what I love. It's what's so powerful about the book of Psalms is that it calls us and reminds us to glorify God. Reminds us that we need his wisdom in our lives. We need him to rule and reign in our lives. He alone is worthy of our praise, even in the times of lament. Even those times where we cry out to him in the middle of the storms in our lives. So today we've come to this idea of thanking God for who he is. We're also going to talk about his beauty and magnifying him, this concept of magnifying him with thanksgiving. It's really interesting because here at Thanksgiving it feels like the posture of praise can be viewed so easily. I mean so much so that it can almost become routine. In fact, sometimes I think when we say thank you, we can do so without really meaning it at all. Or sometimes we just forget or we fail to practice this idea of giving thanks altogether. Or for some of us right now, it might be really difficult to give thanks because of the circumstance that you find yourself in. So because of the hardship that you're dealing with right now or the difficulties in life, maybe it's a challenge for you to give God thanks right now. Maybe you've even dug in your heels a little bit. and You're like, you know what? I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to give thanks to God. I'm refusing. I'm resisting him because I don't feel like there's very much to give thanks for in my life right now. So this idea of thanksgiving, maybe you've taken it for granted or maybe you're just not doing it because of where you're at in your life. But please know this. When the scripture speaks about it in Psalms, it's talking about thanksgiving being a posture of worship that you express both privately and corporately. So when we're talking about magnifying God, we're talking about giving thanks to God, that's something that should be happening privately when you're alone with the Lord all by yourself. Maybe it's in your car or maybe you're out on a walk or you're sitting on the the couch, whatever it is, wherever you are with the Lord, that right there is a great place to give thanks. But then also we come together corporately as a church family. And when we do so, that's also a wonderful place to give thanks to God for who he is and for what he's done. So there in your outline, there in your bulletin, hopefully you grabbed one of these on your way in. You note takers are going to see you're going to be busy today. There's lots of stuff to write down. The first thing we need to learn is this. Point number one there in your notes, we need to understand that giving thanks is both commanded and desired as a response to God. For past, present, and future grace. Giving thanks is both commanded and desired as a response. It's a response to God for past, present, and future grace. Past grace. For the things he has done. 
He sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins so that we might have forgiveness for our sins, so that we might have eternal life. And in addition to his past grace, we also look at his present grace in his life, for the way that he's sustaining us right now. Friend, listen, whether you realize it or not, just the very fact that you're sitting here right now and you're breathing, listen, that's God's grace to you. It's his grace. His present grace is all around us. When you buy it into that piece of food, the bed that you slept in last night, the roof over your head, God's present grace is all around you in multiple ways. And you and me, we are to give him thanks. And then for his future grace, the fact that Jesus is coming back someday and he's going to make all things new and he's going to fulfill all of his promises. For those of us who believe in Jesus Christ, we're also going to get to be with him forever and ever in heaven. So, Giving thanks is commanded and it's desired. Over and over in the Psalms, you're going to see the command to give thanks. But you're also going to see other passages where the psalmist says, you know what, I will give thanks. I will give thanks to the Lord. So we see both the command and the desire that takes place to give thanks to God for who he is, for what he's done, and for what he's going to do next. Look what it says in Psalm 136, verses 1 through 4. I think we've got them for you up on the screens. It says, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods, for His steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for His steadfast love endures forever. To Him alone does great wonders, for His steadfast love endures forever. The writer of this psalm is basically just recounting all that God has done. And in that passage, he continues by walking through all of Israel's history. He says, hey, listen, when we were rescued, remember when we were delivered from the Egyptians, God did that. He did all of those things. And then after every phrase that he lists, he says, for his steadfast love endures forever, which is the reason for the command to give thanks. Now, many of you know that you can command giving thanks, but that doesn't necessarily guarantee that it's always going to be received with the right heart, right? I mean, my dear mother, who you all know and love, I don't know how many times she threatened us growing up, you boys, you better be thankful. You better be grateful. Be thankful or else, she would say. Even with us today, whether it's our own kids or others around us, when we give the command to be thankful, It's not always with the healthiest of motivations. But listen, I can assure you that God, in his great grace and in his word, he commands his people to give thanks. And it becomes our response to him. That leads us to our second big takeaway here today. Point number two there in your notes. Giving thanks to God gives glory to God. When you and I give thanks to God, it gives glory to God. That's the way that he's created us. That's what I love about this next passage that we're going to land on in just a moment. It talks about glorifying God. You and me, we were created to glorify God. And when we give thanks to God, it glorifies Him. We're going to read, it magnifies Him. That's what we're created to do. Look at what it says in Psalm 86, verse 12. It says, I give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with my whole heart. I will glorify your name forever. Verse 13 goes on to say, For great is your steadfast love toward me. You have delivered my soul from the depths of Sheol. I give thanks to God with all all my heart, and I will glorify his name forever. Psalm 138, verse 1 says, I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. The psalmist goes on to talk about God's faithfulness and his steadfast love. Let me ask, what's he doing there? Well, he's talking about the object of our thanksgiving. We give thanks to who? We give thanks to you, O Lord. First and foremost, God is the object of our thanksgiving. Now, if you happen to be friends with me on Facebook, then probably by now you know how much I love sending you a happy birthday message each and every year. But this passage actually makes me want to change what I write. Instead, say something like, you know what? Hey, I am giving thanks to God for your life today. Or I'm giving thanks to God for who he made you to be. That'd be a wonderful way to celebrate God as we celebrate you on your birthday. But again, it makes God the object of thanksgiving. I give thanks to you, O Lord. Not only that, but the psalmist says that I'm supposed to give God thanks with my whole heart. Not my half heart, my whole heart. 
Not some lazy approach to this. No, I'm giving thanks to you, God, with everything that I have, with all of my being, with all of my heart, I give thanks to you. This is the way that God's created us to worship him and to give thanks to him. And the motivation and the reason for this is because of his steadfast love and his faithfulness that just keeps coming like wave after wave after wave. His love for us is so, so good. But sometimes we can't see it because of the depths of our difficulties or our hardships. Regardless, his love really does endure forever. Now, take a look at the screen again. I want you to see Psalm 69, verses 30 through 32. I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify him with thanksgiving. This will please the Lord more than an ox or a bull with horns and hoofs. When the humble see it, they will be glad. You who seek God, let your hearts revive. So listen, the whole heart of what we're talking about here today, the heart of this message is magnifying God with thanksgiving. The way you and I are to magnify God in our lives, it's with thanksgiving. Now, I think more than likely you probably know this, but you can magnify something in one of two ways. You can magnify something with a microscope, or you can magnify something with a telescope. Now, when you magnify something with a microscope, you make something that's really, really small look bigger, right? That's what you do with a microscope. Something's really small, you make it look bigger. But when you use a telescope, you're not making anything look bigger. Now, what you're doing is you're actually beginning to see with more clarity just how big something really is. Tracking with me here? So what the psalmist is talking about is magnifying God. Now, of course, God's not small at all, is he? It's not like we need to make him any bigger. That's not what needs to happen. It's not like Jesus in a box or in our pocket and we need to make him bigger. No, it's much more like a telescope. We need to magnify him because we need to see him more clearly for how big he really is. He is infinitely great. Now, of all the people who come to Lawrence Heights, many are believers in Jesus Christ. But listen, there are some who come to our church and they're not believers in Christ. And if that describes you here today, friend, listen, if you're not a believer in Jesus, please just know that we're super glad that you're here. We really are. We'd love to answer any questions that you might have. So seriously, we just want to thank you for being here today. But for many of you, if you don't believe in Christ, if you don't have a relationship with him, Thanksgiving is going to probably seem really horizontal to you. Why? Well, because it's based more on circumstances and things, because giving thanks for you is always predicated on somebody else doing something for you. And as an unbeliever, you're going to try to give thanks as morally best as you know how. But for those of us who are believers, thanksgiving has its very root in God. Why? Because he is the giver of all good things. So the question is you, are you magnifying God with your thanksgiving? Are you seeing with clarity just how great he really is? Are you magnifying him with thanksgiving? Is that something that you're practicing in your life right now? Because that's what we're called to do. We're called to magnify. We're called to glorify God and to center everything around him. Listen to the way that God puts it in Psalm 50, also up on the screen. But beginning in verse 9, God says, I will not accept a bull from your house or goats from your folds, for every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the hills and all that moves in the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world and its fullness are mine. Do I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and perform your vows to the Most High. The one who offers thanksgiving and his sacrifice glorifies me. To one who orders his ways rightly, I will show the salvation of God. In other words, God's saying, listen, I'm not asking for all your gifts I'm not asking for all those things that you could bring me, like your good works. I'm not asking for any of that stuff. No, what I want from you is your worship through thanksgiving. We don't have to bring all those other things because he already owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He already has everything that he needs. But what he wants is the sacrifice of praise from us with thanksgiving. That's what he wants. I get that question all the time. Steve, just tell me what God wants. I just did. He wants to be magnified with our thanksgiving. 
which leads us to our third big idea here today. Point number three there in your notes. Go ahead and write it down this way. Our thankfulness must be centered on the giver more than the gifts. It must be centered more on the giver than on the gifts. Far too often, if we're honest, we get enamored with the gifts that God has given in our lives. For example, some of you parents, maybe you've made your children your cause right now. That sounds grand and noble, but you're making them your cause instead of training them for the cause of Christ. Others of you, maybe it's your job. Your job is the cause of your life. Making money in life, that's your cause. Or maybe for you, pursuing leisure is something that you value so much that it has now become the cause of your life. It's what you are centering your whole world around right now. Whatever it is for you, just know this. Our thankfulness must be centered on the giver more than the gifts. Yet too many of us are enamored with God's gifts and yet not God himself. Or as the psalmist says, I will magnify God with thanksgiving. I'm going to magnify God, not the gifts that he's given me. I'm going to magnify him with thanksgiving. So let me just ask, what keeps you and me from being thankful? What keeps us from expressing thankfulness? I mean, if you're not practicing thankfulness to God on a consistent basis, if that's not happening in your life, what's keeping you from doing that? I think there's three things that keep us from being thankful. I've got them listed under point number four there in your notes. Go ahead and write them down as we go through these. I think the first one is pride and selfishness. Pride and selfishness, simply put. Whenever we begin to center on ourselves, on our needs and on our wants, we become more enamored with the gifts than the giver. When we do that, then pride and selfishness begins to take root in our lives. We center things around us rather than around God. I love the way that John Piper puts it. He says, at the root of all ingratitude is the love of one's own greatness. For genuine gratitude admits that we are beneficiaries of an unearned request. Natural man hates to think of himself as an unworthy beneficiary. It robs him of all his glory by giving it all to God. Therefore, while a man loves his own glory and prizes his self-sufficiency and hates to think of himself as sinful, sick, and helpless, he will never feel any genuine gratitude to the true God and so will never magnify God, only himself. In other words, we are ungrateful. And we experience this ingratitude because we love our own greatness. We're not really focused on magnifying God's glory as much as we're focused on seeking our own glory. That's what keeps us from being thankful. When I'm trying to build my own agenda, when I'm trying to seek my own glory instead of God's glory, it robs me of giving him praise. It robs me of magnifying him with thanksgiving. Maybe for you, it's not pride and selfishness. Maybe it's more about apathy and forgetfulness. Jot that down in your notes. Maybe for you, you just don't care or you've forgotten what God has done. I mean, there's a reason why Psalm 103 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits. But the reality is that many of us are forgetful, right? We forget what the Lord has done for us. We forget what he's done all throughout history. Or we forget what he's accomplished through his son, Jesus Christ. Or we've simply grown apathetic about it. The reason some of us don't give thanks to God is because we don't just, we really just don't care. Or we've kind of grown lazy or we've forgotten because of all the busyness in our life. We've forgotten what God has done. We've forgotten how mighty he is and how good he is and how gracious he is. By the way, that's one of the reasons I love the praise and worship songs that we sing here each week, because they remind us of the qualities and the characteristics and the attributes of God. It's also why I love reading the Psalms so much, because when you read the scriptures there, you're reminded of who God is, and you're reminded of what he's done. But again, some of us are struggling with thankfulness today. Maybe it's because we've forgotten, or maybe it's because we've got tunnel vision. All we can see right now is the circumstance right in front of us. And the circumstance that's right in front of us, it's so hard and it's so difficult and it's so painful, so frustrating, so disappointing, and so not what we thought it was going to be. In fact, that's all that we can see. Listen, tunnel vision is only good if it leads to Christ. 
Tunnel vision on Christ will open everything else up. But tunnel vision on anything else other than Christ will just leave you locked right here and miserable. Then the third reason people aren't thankful is because of difficulties and despair. Listen, there's no doubt that there's circumstances, even in our own church family right now, that when you look at them, it causes you to think, God, what, what in the world are you doing here? Some of you know people. Others of you are experiencing this personally in your own lives. And it causes you to pray, God, God, have mercy on this family or have mercy on this person. Because we see them wrestling with the difficulties or the trials that they're in. And then we question, actually, what God is doing. So much so that it becomes really hard to give thanks at all. And yet, listen, I want to encourage you. If you are suffering right now, as a believer, I want to remind you what the scriptures say. In 1 Thessalonians 5.18, the Apostle Paul lovingly challenges us to give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Listen, let me tell you that sometimes preaching the word of God can be really hard. And I can assure you that I have cried and I have wept over people in our church when I saw the pain and the difficulties that they're going through. And yet God says to his children, give thanks in all circumstances because I'm working in ways that you just can't see. And we need to help our brothers and sisters give thanks, which means that we ourselves need to be committed to giving God thanks in all circumstances, right? Because it magnifies so fifth and finally there in your notes, how do we magnify God with thanksgiving? Well, we've already established that the Bible commands us to magnify God with thanksgiving. So let me ask you, men here in the room, how do you magnify God with thanksgiving? Ladies, how about you? How do you magnify God with thanksgiving? You kids in the room, I'll ask you as well. How do you magnify God with thanksgiving? Again, this is both a command and a desire that we would magnify him and glorify him and seek his greatness with thanksgiving. The question that I'm asking is, are you doing that in your life? And if so, how? Well, quickly, before we close, I want to give you a few practical things that you can do. Go ahead and write them down. The first one is remember his deeds and recount God's steadfast love and faithfulness. Listen, we need to remember his deeds. We need to recount the steadfast love, and the faithfulness of God. we got to practice this. we got to work at this. We can't afford to be biblically illiterate. We have to understand what God has done. Now, how do you do this? You do it in the scriptures. You do it in the lives of others. And you do it in your own life. That's what I love about Psalm 136. It gives you snapshots of the history of Israel, much of which we've spent the last seven months studying in the book of Exodus, right? We spent 26 weeks remembering and recounting the greatness of God. But you could also sit down with somebody over a meal and just listen to what God has done in their life. Maybe how God's rescued them, how he delivered them, how he helped them through a really hard time, how he saved them. Listen to the reports of others who are giving thanks to God in their lives and then let that encourage your heart as well. You can also do it in your own life. Then we can remember God's love and faithfulness, and you can recount his deeds. Psalm 9, verse 1, write that down somewhere in the margin somewhere. You can put it on a sticky note later on today. It says, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I'll recount all of his wonderful deeds. I'll be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. Psalm 9, verse 1 and 2. Like the old hymn says, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Then the second thing we can do is this. We can acknowledge our need and receive God's steadfast love and faithfulness. Listen, if you're going to magnify God with thanksgiving, we certainly have to remember what he's done. But we also have to acknowledge our own need, right? I mean, when you say thank you, you're admitting that somebody else has done something for you. So this idea of being thankful is a humble posture. In many ways, it's undeserving. It's recognizing our need for grace and for mercy. Listen, the one who prizes self-sufficiency will not magnify God with thanksgiving. If you prize self-sufficiency in your own life, you won't magnify God with thanksgiving. There's just no way. So we need to acknowledge our need for God 
And then we can receive his steadfast love and faithfulness. That's what our posture should be like before the Lord. And then third and finally, we rely on faith in future grace. Jot it down. We rely on faith in future grace. Relying on God's promises to us. It can actually fuel our current living and give us hope in the good times and the bad. It reminds us that our hope is not in our circumstances, but rather in the grace of what God is doing for us right now. And in the future, even more so when he sends his son Jesus to come back. Amen? So what does this look like in your own life? Now, I mean, very practically speaking, how do we as believers do this in our own lives? Well, maybe for you, it just looks like raising your hands or clapping your hands in worship. Again, privately or corporately. And I understand you commuters going back and forth to Kansas City or Topeka. I know you can look a little weird when you're doing that in your car. But the reality is that's what thankfulness looks like. You can't help but praise God. Please just keep at least one hand on the steering wheel while you do so, okay? When you and I come into worship services here on Sunday morning, listen, we need to come ready to give thanks. We need to be ready physically, emotionally, and spiritually to give thanks verbally. There's appropriate times to clap our hands and appropriate times to raise our hands, both corporately and privately, which is exactly what the scripture is teaching us. It might also look like showing gratitude to somebody else just out of the overflow and understanding of God's graciousness to you. Giving thanks to God actually shows up in giving thanks to others. Maybe it's a meal that you buy for somebody. I mean, how fun is that? doesn't even have to be for any special reason. You can just do it. Just bless them. Model that and teach that to your kids. There's all kinds of ways to be thankful to God in the way that you show gratitude to others. Blessing the neighbors that live around you, your family members, your friends. Listen, just let God be the focus. But as God is your focus, let him love others through you. That's what it might look like. It also might Look like verbally giving thanks to God for what he's done throughout history and creation, for his protection, for his provision, for his deliverance and his healing, especially for his salvation and his very presence. Listen, for you to verbally give thanks to God out loud for what he's done in the past, looking through the scriptures and saying, God, I'm just amazed at you parting the Red Sea. God, I'm just blown away by how you rescued Daniel from the mouths of lions. God, I am in awe of what Jesus did on the cross for my sins. Recount all the powerful things that we see in Scripture and then verbally say something out loud. Practice that. Give thanks to God for what he's done. Maybe it looks like getting together with friends or family to verbalize what you're thankful to God for or ways that his steadfast love and faithfulness to you have caused you to be thankful. And again, don't let your gratitude just be horizontal with each other. I'm challenging you to get vertical and thank God, the giver of all good things. Or lastly, it might even look like a give thanks journal where you write things down that you're thankful for. Now, in full disclosure, I want to confess, I, I, want to be, I don't, want to, don't want to be deceitful before you today. I will confess, I've never been good at journaling myself. Listen, I'm really good at starting journals. I mean, if, if starting journals was ever an Olympic event, I would be a gold medal, medalist. I, I, I start really, really strong, but I confess I don't finish those journals. Maybe you can create just a board in your house. Call it a give thanks board where you and your family can list the things that you're thankful to God for. I'm challenging you to get creative. Find ways to give thanks to God. It would be such a beautiful thing for Lawrence Heights to be the kind of people for, to say what the psalmist said in Psalm 69. I will magnify you, God. I will magnify you with thanksgiving. I will reveal, I will declare, I will display your greatness with thanksgiving. That's the kind of people that he's looking for. That's what he's created us to do. And I pray that you and I will grow in this area specifically. Amen? Amen. Let's close in prayer together. Father God, thank you so much for your love to us, for your steadfast love, and for your faithfulness. And for how these psalms just repeat that refrain over and over again. Your steadfast love and your faithfulness is so, so great. So this morning, Lord, we just want to give you thanks. And we want to give you thanks 
the way we want to give you thanks above and above all is by just by magnifying you, Lord, by giving glory to you, because you are the one who's worthy of that thanks. Father, forgive us for all those times in which we've put our eyes on the gifts instead of you, the giver. Give us eyes to see you more clearly. Help us to truly live lives of thankfulness. We love you, Lord. We worship you. We magnify you. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, before we close our time together in song, I just want to extend a personal invitation to you. Listen, here's your opportunity to respond. If you don't have a relationship with God, I pray that we have magnified him today in such a way that you see him more clearly. And if you want to know more about the reason for the hope that we have, the reason for the gratitude and joy that we have, I would love to talk with you and let you know how you too can have a relationship with him through his son, Jesus. Or maybe you're visiting here today. You've been looking for a new church home. I pray that through the openness and transparency that you've witnessed earlier today in our little family meeting, I pray that God is telling you through that that this is it. This is the place where you can belong and use your talents to magnify him even more. Or maybe you're here today and you have some other need that you'd just like prayer for. Listen, whatever the need, I want to invite you to come forward at this time as we all stand and sing together right now. like a hurricane I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy when all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory and I realize just how like a hurricane I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy and all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory I realize just how And he is our prize, drawn to redemption by the grace in his eyes. The grace is an ocean, we're all sinking. So heaven meets earth like an unforeseen kiss. My heart turns, my lips are my chest. I saw 
so much for joining us this Sunday church last quick thing before you dismiss how many of you are here on Tuesday for our FTW fellowship training worship night yes praise God it was a great experience and a good challenge to share the gospel pastor Ben left us with a challenge a good action step that we can take right away and for those of you who even weren't here, we'd like to challenge you to participate with us. On your way out in the back, you'll see in the stands and some of the tables out there, there's these Christmas invite cards. And there's got information for our Christmas Day service, our Christmas Eve service, as well as just the things that are going on here, the different theme days we're going to have. We're going to have a cookies and cocoa Sunday, an ugly Christmas sweater Sunday, lots of fun stuff to, to participate in. But you guys would be very surprised how open and receptive people are to invitations to church this time of the year. So we challenge you to take one for your family, for your household, put on the fridge and you know, pray for the lost, pray for those who you could invite, as well as, you know, on the back you can see the days we're keeping up with, as well as take two to invite family and friends that you guys have that maybe don't have a church home or maybe are lost and don't know the gospel. And, and so that's a, a challenge that we have for you. But with that, thank you for joining us this morning, church. We hope to see you next week. You are dismissed. Thanks again for listening today. We'd love to hear from you. If you'd like more information about our church or if you just want to share what God's been doing in your life, drop us a line. Give us a call. Again, may God bless you.